Hello. I'm here to talk to you about accessing your PSAT scores, which are going to be available on December 8th, 2020. So this year, the scores will only be available on your College Board account. Normally, they send to the schools the paper copy, and we call you down for an assembly, and we talk to you about your scores. And then you can also, at that point, link to your College Board account. This year, they're going directly to your College Board account. So if you don't have one, you're going to create one. And if you do have one, then I'm gonna let you know about how to access that. So the uh, scores will not be available until Tuesday the 8th. If you know your College Board account and you provide an email when you took the PSATs, you're gonna get an email from them knowing, letting you know that your scores are available. You log into your account and there are your scores. If you don't remember your username or password, you're gonna follow the retrieval instructions on the College Board. The College Board is separate. Um, it's a separate company from any of the schools. And so we don't have any access to your username or password. They won't give it to us. Um, so you would just need to contact them if you can't remember it. So, um, so if you have previously created your College Board account, you're just gonna log in and see your scores. If you don't see your scores, but you think you know your College Board account, it may be that you have more than one account or that the information that you put on the PSAT didn't match the information you put on your account. So you're gonna to have to, at that point, call the College Board to combine any additional accounts or to match your account. One thing that often happens is students forget their username and password and so they create a new account. Um, so you end up with several accounts and they just need to be combined. So at that point, you would call College Board customer service and they would help you combine those accounts. If you don't yet have a College Board account, you've never created one, create a College Board account now and make sure to use the email that you provided when you took the PSATs. The College Board will recognize your email and other personal information and your PSAT score report will appear on your new account. Make sure to write down your username or password and that should be the only account that you have. Um, and this is the login sign up um, link right there. If you didn't list an email when you took the PSATs, you can create an account on College Board and just be sure to, exact, to provide all the exact same information you used when you took the PSAT, even if it didn't have an email on there. So, um, so for example, make sure that if you used a nickname when you signed up for the PSATs that you use that same nickname when you are you know, creating your account. So, because everything has to be exactly the same for the matching tools to work. So this is a lot of information that hopefully you won't need, but for troubleshooting, if after the scores have been released um, and you're still having trouble accessing the scores, um, you may need to update your information. You can log into the student score portal, which is where you would also get your scores, and you're gonna follow the instructions to match it. If you're still having trouble after that, the school does have all your score reports and all of the information so that we can send you the, the report um, and a registration number that you will then be able to use to create your account or match it up. Um, if all of that fails, you're gonna have to call customer service and talk to the college board. So just to remind you, the PSATs are practice. Um, I often find that students get very upset. They see a score and they think, oh, this means that I can't go to college, that I am a terrible student, and it doesn't mean any of those things. Um, some students are very good test takers and some students aren't, but everyone can get better at test taking. Um, there are definitely skills that you can improve on. For most of you, this is your first time in a classroom setting in months. So if you did well, that's awesome because it was you had a mask on and you're sitting there for several hours for the first time in a very long time. So we use the PSATs to figure out what did you do well and where do you need to improve? And again, almost everyone can improve. So everyone can learn skills to be a better test taker and everyone can get used to this kind of test. Most people do better on the SATs than they did on the PSATs. And some of that is just because you had never taken a test like this before and you're just gonna get better with some practice. 
So understanding your score report, when you get to the, um, your account, then you're going to get your score report. And it's much more involved than this mini one right here. Um, this is your access code that I mentioned, your college board ID. These are the kinds of things you're gonna be looking for later on to link your scores. Um, it gives you your total score. Now, one thing to notice is because you're a junior, the scores only run from 320 to 1520 rather than 400 to 1600 like the SATs do. And that's because the college board knows that you haven't had as much curriculum as you will by the time you take it in the spring and then the fall of your senior year. So um, the, the PSAT and the SAT are normalized tests. And what that means is that um, your most people are going to be in that 50th percentile range. So in the 40th to the 60th percentile. So when you're looking at your scores, it's telling you you are in the 51st percentile. So that means this person did average. They were right in the middle of everyone who took it. And it is comparing you to juniors all over the nation, not just at your school, not just in your state, but all over the nation. So then it breaks it down into your reading and writing score and your math score. So in this student's case, it, they got a 430 on the evidence-based reading and writing score. So that's in the 31st percentile. So that's a little bit under the benchmark for considered to be in the green and kind of in that average. So a little bit below average. So their skills insight report, which you'll find when you log into your account, is going to be very specific about what skills this student needs to work on to bring that score up. So, and they are all coded red, yellow, or green. Um, what scores you might, like if you're in the yellow, what scores you're close to mastering, um, and they're in the green that you have mastered those skills. So for the math score, they did very well in math, 69th percentile, so they were above average, um, yet their skills insight will still show them what areas they can improve on. And then it breaks it down a little bit more. And again, on your skills insight, it's going to be um, broken down even more. So um, this talks about the National Merit Scholarship. There, the video that I'm going to show you at the end, we'll talk a little bit more about that. There are some scholarship opportunities um, and we'll mention the Khan Academy prep in a minute. So this is what's really helpful about the PSATs is that you were able to see exactly how you answered and where you answered incorrectly on the PSATs. Um, the school has your booklet and you are welcome to come get that booklet. And so then you can take this sheet um, and look exactly how you did. So for example, on num question number one, the correct answer was A, you got it right. That was considered to be an easier question. Then you look at number two, you answered um, A when the correct answer was B, it was a little bit harder question. Um, so you can go in and say, okay, what mistake did I make? And you might figure out that, oh, it was just a silly mistake or that you were a little bit nervous maybe at the beginning of the test. Um, so you can really start going through and figuring out where do I need to work on this? And what makes it really nice is that the skills insight that you'll see on your report tells you exactly what you need to do. Over here, it tells you, you got out of reading 47 total questions, you got 21 correct, 25 incorrect, and you omitted one. So wherever you see you omitted, then that's an area where you can take a little bit of time at the end to guess. So there are some things you can do to get better at that. So, um, so anyway, there's a lot more in the full report, but this is just to give you an idea. Um, but like I said, the best thing you can do is really look at exactly what did you do? Um, where did you make mistakes that you can improve on? I can often tell if somebody was just really nervous because they might have gotten a whole bunch of easy ones incorrect right at the beginning because they were nervous. So like I said, um, the school has your test booklet and this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you can pick those up at the Winnicott Auditorium when you come to pick up your trimester two materials. So Khan Academy is um, the only place that the College Board shares official test information. The College Board only gives it to Khan Academy. 
Um, and that's because they want everybody to have equal access to the best information. So you can link your PSAT scores to Khan Academy and it will give you individualized practice. So you and your friend could both be doing Khan Academy having linked your PSAT scores and you might be getting very different practice because you might have mastered some skills that your friend hasn't or vice versa. So to link the accounts, you first sign into your Khan Academy account or you create it and you follow instructions to sign into your college board account and link them. The data on um, how students are, how they do after some Khan Academy prep is pretty impressive. Um, just by doing nothing, no practice at all, most students go up about 60 points when they retake a test. And that's just because they've gotten used to it. They're, they are just better at taking it. Um, six to eight hours of official SAT prep on Khan Academy, students are um, earning about 90 additional points. Then 20 to 22 hours, 115 additional points. And there were 16,000 students in the original study who linked their scores to Khan Academy saw increases of over 200 points. So, um, and these increases were across all demographics. So basically everybody had, most people had really benefited from doing some Khan Academy prep. Um, Khan Academy works best if, if you actually spend some time doing it. So um, what's upcoming? The New Hampshire State SAT will be in March 2021. I feel very confident that for you juniors, this will be a much more typical testing season coming up. Um, we were able to give the PSATs and SATs this fall, so I'm quite confident that March will take place. And next year, um, you'll be able to take the SATs again in the fall. So all juniors will be required to take it in March of 21, and you'll be signed up through the school and the state. You won't have to sign up on your own for that test. We'll talk about how to sign up after that. Um, so right now, due to the pandemic, um, most schools have been test optional this year. Most colleges have been test optional. However, that was a trend we were seeing before the pandemic. Um, last fall, I was coming in every day and almost every day there was another email of a school that had decided to go test optional. So it's definitely a trend that's out there that got sped up by the pandemic. Um, we don't know exactly what will happen next year. I do know that already this year, colleges are seeing that a lot more students did decided to not submit tests than they even expected, even with the pandemic. So being test optional is definitely here to stay. Some schools are going to return to requiring tests without a doubt, but I also suspect that many will continue to be test optional, even if they hadn't planned on going that way quite as soon as they did before COVID-19. So, but the best goal to have is do the best you can. So if you end up needing to submit your scores, they're as good as they can be. And then if you don't have to commit to submit your scores, it's up to you, then you can decide whether or not those scores are gonna benefit you. So if you need any help, you have any questions, you wanna talk about your tests further, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and, if, and again, if you can't access your account um, and all of these tips don't help, I do have access to your score reports and can both send them to you, but more importantly, get you hooked up with your own account so that you can link that to Khan Academy and also it's a much more complete account. So, so I'm going to end with a video from the college board that, that does a nice job of a lot of what I've said and a little bit extra. Congratulations on taking the PSAT and MSQT. Now it's time to see your scores, which you can get on your phone or a computer. The first thing you'll see is your total score, which is a combination of your scores on the evidence-based reading and writing and math sections. These scores give you an idea of how you'll do on the SAT and how ready you are for college. Your test scores, cross-test scores, and sub-scores give you even more details about how you did in specific areas. Scores in green show your strengths, Scores in yellow and red help you understand where you need to improve. Go to Skills Insight to dig even deeper and see what your scores say about your skills and how you can develop them further. 
Thinking about your scores and making a plan to improve are important steps towards college. The PSAT and MSQT has provided millions of eligible students with the opportunity to enter the National Merit Scholarship Program, an annual academic competition for recognition and scholarships. Go to the NMSC Selection Index section to see if you meet the entry requirements. You can also use your PSAT and MSQT scores to start preparing for the SAT. Go to satpractice.org to create and link your College Board and Khan Academy accounts to get started. Your PSAT and MSQT test scores will get imported into Khan Academy and give you a personalized SAT study plan to help you practice the areas where you need the most work. Most students take the SAT in the spring of their junior year and again in August or the fall of their senior year. Don't forget to register! Taking challenging classes is another great way to prepare for college. The AP Potential section of your score report tells you which AP classes would be great for you. Speak to your teacher or counselor to learn more about AP. You can also explore careers based on your interests and then find compatible college and career options. Here's a quick recap. Don't forget to review your scores, learn more about scholarship and recognition opportunities, practice and register for the SAT, find the AP classes that are best for you, and explore college and career options.